You will. You'll get some today, and you'll get some tomorrow. Um, finishing up this chapter today, so you'll have quite a bit of time tomorrow uh, to do that. Okay, so at the top of, um, of page 244, and it says skeptics advocate. So what skeptics might say, even presented with all of the evidence that's been in the chapter thus far. Uh, here's, here's one uh, possible um, statement they would make against uh, the, uh, the manuscripts of the New Testament. The documents are not early enough. Some skeptics may think that a 15 to 40 year gap between the life of Christ and the writings about him is too wide for the testimony to be reliable, but they are mistaken. They think about the events that occurred 15 to 40 years ago. When histories, historians write about those events, we don't say, oh, that's impossible. No one can remember events from that long ago. Such skepticism, skepticism is clearly unwarranted. Historians today write accurately about events from the 70s, 80s, and 90s by consulting their own memories, those of other eyewitnesses, and any written sources from the time. Like newspaper like that, how many of you think about chatting with one another? This process is the same one the New Testament writers use to record their documents. Like a good reporter, Luke interviewed eyewitnesses. And as we'll see in the next chapter, some New Testament writers were eyewitnesses themselves. They could remember 15 to 40 years of, uh, year old events events quite easily, just as you can. Well, that long, but an adult can. I can. Um, why can you remember certain events vividly from 15 to 40 years ago? And if you're old enough, even further back, you may be able to remain, uh, re remember certain events because they were made a great emotional impact on you. In fact, those of us who are over the hill can remember events from 30 years ago better than from 30 minutes ago. When, where were you when, uh, when, uh, where were you and what were you doing when President Kennedy was assassinated? I don't remember that. Uh, when the Challenger exploded, I remember that one. When the second plane hit the tower, I remember that one. Why can you remember those events so well? Because they made a deep emotional impact on you. Since an event like the resurrection certainly would have made a deep emotional impact on the uh, New Testament writers and other eyewitnesses, they may have consulted. They may have consulted. It's easy to see why the history of Jesus could be easily recalled many years later especially in a culture with an established reliance on oral testimony. Furthermore, if the major works of the New Testament are eyewitness accounts written within two generations of the events, then they are not likely to be legend. Why? Because historical research indicates that a myth cannot begin to crowd out historical facts while the eyewitnesses are still alive. Uh, for this reason, Roman historian A.N. Sherwin White calls the myth mythological view of the New Testament unbelievable. William Lane Craig writes, the tests show that even two generations is too short to allow legendary um, uh, tendencies to wipe out the hard core of historical fact. Inside of those two generations, eyewitnesses are still around to correct the errors of, of historical revisionists. We are seeing this tendency right now with regard to the Holocaust. In the early 21st century, we've begun to see more people claim that the Holocaust never happened. Why are the revisionists trying this now? Because most of the eyewitnesses have now died. Fortunately, since we have written, eye, written eyewitness testimony from the Holocaust and photographs and videotape footage taken by the Nazis themselves, the revisionists are not successful in passing off their lies as the truth. The same holds true for the New Testament. If the New Testament was written within 60 years of the events it records, it's highly unlikely those events could be legendary. And as we have seen, all of the New Testament documents were written within 60 years of the events uh, and, and uh, much earlier. So now open up your uh, Little Atheist books to the Engage for Chapter 9, uh, number 5, on page... Um, 68. So 
So number five says this. What would you say to a skeptic who says, I don't believe the New Testament because the documents are not early enough? How would you answer that? There are eyewitnesses still alive, and, and the, the authors were either eyewitnesses themselves, or they interviewed eyewitnesses. So, uh, it was, the, the, those documents were written very early. If we can't believe the writers of the New Testament, then we can't believe history from, any history from before you, Reagan, really president, elected president of the United States in 1980, uh, was, uh, uh, was 9, did 9-11 really happen? Did the Berlin Wall fall? Uh, we can't believe those things either. Uh, and he gives the example of the Holocaust uh, as well. So as you read in, uh, in Keller, uh, in Timothy Keller's book, the, the, the documents of the New Testament are too early to be legend, to be fiction. Because the sources was the memories of eyewitnesses. You can think of memories that you have that, that, uh, from, from history. Um, and there's a reason why those 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 um, memories that so many people can remember, the, the kind of memories where you, when someone says, where were you when? Everybody knows. Everybody knows where they were when they first heard of Bible. Everybody remembers, everybody of my age remembers the Challenger. Uh, the Challenger was a, a, a space shuttle mission that was taking, I believe, the first non-astronaut who happened to be a teacher the fall and it exploded. And I, I remember exactly where I was. I remember the classroom I was in in the middle of the day. And Ike Payne, our principal, came on the uh, on the intercom and said, the challenger has exploded. And, uh, and for the rest of the day, all any class did the whole day was watch the, watch the TV uh, newscast of, of the challenger. And I did not believe that because it's now 30 some years ago that that happened. I know what I saw. I remember um, waking up um, the morning of 9-11 and wanting to, um, wanting to get some homeschooling done with my two older children. So I was going to turn on Barney the night so that, uh, so that I could work with Josh and and um, there was one of the towers on the bottom. And we watched for a while, and, and then I realized that this might be, um, this might be hard for my young children to be watching. And so, um, and so I turned it off, and we went about our day. But Josh, who at the time was, gosh, it was 2001, Josh had just turned 11, uh, and uh, he said, Mom, I, I need to see this one again. And, and I said, OK, son, I'll let you watch me. But I can make a note of my computer screen. And I turned on the TV, and seconds later, he said, we, we watched the same. As is the beginning of the first Iraq war, Josh was a baby. Josh was, was we were supposed to have uh, our small group that night at our house. And um, and I was, I don't remember why, it was stupid, but I was terrified that I was going to do something. And I was ready to light into him when he got home. Personally, I have a lot more mature now than I was when he got home. And he walked through the door, and I don't know what I said to him. It was probably church. And he said, Can you do me a favor? I said, Mom, I don't know. Can you do me a favor? 
And um, you can ask uh, when you see Mark Carpenter. You can ask. He was the only one that called and said, I don't want to be in the movie. Sure. And we sat and watched the coverage on the TV in our bed. And it was Josh, uh, I have video of it. Josh having his first solid poop uh, that night. And, and Mark was the one that was um, And uh, yeah, it's etched in my memory. Surely, surely, the resurrection and the man that you watched die would be etched. Uh, it, it doesn't make a sense that it would not be uh, Okay, so let's uh, continue on. Why not earlier? At this point, the skeptic might say, okay, fine, the New Testament is early, but it's not as early as I would expect. Why didn't they write down their testimony early? If they saw what they said they saw, I would wait 15 or 20 years to write it down. There are a number of reasons for, uh, for the wait. First, since the New Testament writers were living in a culture where the vast majority of people were illiterate, there was no initial, um, or there, excuse me, there was no initial need or utility, and helpfulness, in writing it down. First century people in Palestine, by the necessity, developed strong memories in order to remember and pass on information. Uh, Craig writes, in an oral culture like that of first century Palestine, the ability to memorize and retain large tracts of oral tradition was highly, a highly prized and a highly developed skill. From the earliest age in the home, elementary school and, uh, and, and synagogue, uh, the synagogue were taught to memorize faithfully sacred tradition. The disciples would have exercised similar care with the teachings of Jesus. In such an oral culture, facts about Jesus may have been put into memorable form. There's good evidence for this. Harry Habermas has identified 41 short sections of the New Testament that appear to be creeds, compact sayings that can be easily remembered. You're memorizing one of them right now, First Corinthians 15, and that was uh, and that were probably passed down along orally before they were put into writing. One of these creeds we've already mentioned, First Corinthians 15, eight. Second, since some of the New Testament writers may have had high hopes that Jesus was going to come back in their lifetime, they saw no immediate need to write it down. But as they aged, perhaps they thought it was wise to put their ob observation down on papyrus. Third, as Christianity spread all over the ancient world, writing became the most efficient means to communicate with the rapidly expanding church. In other words, time and distance forced the New Testament writers to write it down. On the other hand, there may not have been a gap for at least one gospel. If those fragments from the Dead Sea Scrolls are really from Mark, and they most likely are, then the gospel might have been written in the 30s. Why? Because the fragments are copies, not of the, orig uh, not of the original. If we have copies from the 50s, then the original must have been earlier. Moreover, many scholars believe that there actually were written sources that predate the Gospels. In fact, Luke, in the first four verses of his Gospel, says that he checked with other sources, uh, though some of these may have been earlier uh, Gospels, such as Matthew and Mark. Was one of his sources Mark's Gospel? We don't know for sure. It certainly seems like Luke is speaking of several other written sources, because he says many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us. Luke may have referenced Mark's gospel and other written testimonies, including public court records of Jesus' trial. In the end, it doesn't really matter whether whether or not they were the that whether or not there were written sources that predate the New Testament. Nor does it matter if Mark was written in the in the 30s AD. Why? Because the documents we do know about are early enough and contain early source material. As we'll see in the next chapter, many, if not all, of the New Testament documents were written by eyewitnesses or their contemporaries within 15 to 40 years of Jesus. And some contain oral or other written testimony that goes back to the resurrection itself. In other words, the real issue isn't so much the date of the writings, but the date of the sources used in the writings. Uh, so, uh, number six in your book, after answering um, 
the skeptic's previous question, how would you respond to one who persists by saying that the written testimony of the New Testament was still not as early as expected? Why didn't they write it down sooner, in other words? One reason is they thought Jesus was going to come back, right? So why do we need to write this down? We're going to be seeing him in another year or two, right? Before we die. What else? It was an oral culture. That's how they passed things down. Why was it an oral culture? Right. It, most people were illiterate. What good is it to write books for someone who can't read them? People can't read them. So there wasn't much use for a written account. Now, some were very early, as I've mentioned before, and as the book mentioned, the Gospel of Mark in particular. Um, and all are early enough. Uh, early enough. And, and the source material is very early. Okay, let's keep reading. Why not more? Skeptics may ask, if Jesus actually did rise from the dead, shouldn't there be more written about him than there is? In response, we actually have more testimony than we might expect. And certainly more than enough to establish beyond a reasonable doubt what happened. As we have seen, Jesus is referenced by far more authors than the Roman emperor at that time. Jesus' 43 authors to Tiberius' 10 within 150 years of their lives. Nine of those authors were eyewitnesses or contemporaries of the events, and they wrote 27 documents, the majority of which mention or imply the resurrection. That's more than enough to establish historicity. For those who still think there should have been even more written about Jesus, New Testament scholar Craig Blumberg offers four reasons why that's not a reasonable expectation. First, the humble beginnings of Christianity. Second, the remote location of Palestine on the frontiers of the Roman Empire. Third, the small percentage of uh, the works of ancient Greco-Roman historians that have survived. This could be due to loss, decay, destruction, or all of the above, and the lack of attention paid by surviving historical documents to Jewish figures in general. Nevertheless, some skeptics still think there should be testimony from some of the 500 people who allegedly saw the risen Christ. Skeptic Farrell Till is one of them. During a debate on the resurrection that I, Norm, had with him in 1994, Till demanded, trot out one of those 500 witnesses, or give us something that they wrote and we will accept that, that as reliable proof of evidence, or evidence. This is an unreasonable expectation for a number of reasons. First, as we have already pointed out, first century Palestine was an oral culture. Most people were illiterate and remembered and passed on information orally. Second, how many of those predominantly illiterate eyewitnesses would have written something even if they could write? Even today, with as a much higher literacy rate of modern writing and research tools. How many people do you know that have, who have written a book or even an article on any subject? How many do you know who have written a book or an article on a contemporary historical event, even a significant one like 9-11? Probably not many, and certainly fewer than one out of 500. Has Farrell Till ever written an article or a major historical event he witnessed? Think, uh, third, even uh, if some of those 500 average people did write down what they saw, why would skeptics expect their testimony to survive for 2,000 years? The New Testament survives intact because of, of the thousands of manuscripts copied by scribes for grow, a growing church over the centuries. Historical works from the ancient uh, historians such as Josephus, Tacitus, and Pliny survive on just a handful of copies, and those copies are hundreds of years from the originals. Why do the skeptics think anything is going to be written, written, much less survive, from an ancient group of illiterate Galilean peasants? Finally, we do know the names of many of the 500, and their testimony is written down in the New Testament. They include Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Peter, Paul, and James, plus nine who are named elsewhere as apostles Matthew, in Matthew 10 and Acts 1. So we shouldn't expect more testimony than what we have about Jesus. And what we do have is more than enough to establish historicity. The last question. 
How would you respond to a skeptic who asks, if Jesus actually did rise from the dead, shouldn't there be more written about him than there is? Yeah. Right, yeah. There maybe there was, but it obviously was more written. But we can't expect it to have survived. Um, the only reason we have the New Testament is because of how Catholic people were converting it, because they saw it to be totally other, to be completely different from all those other writings. It was inspired by God. And, and we, we have more than would be expected, partly because of what Lucas has just said. And certainly enough to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that historicity. And then Craig Blomberg gives uh, four reasons why there isn't more. The humble beginnings of Christianity as opposed to the Roman Empire, right? Uh, it wasn't a, a powerful group of people, it was a persecuted group of people. The remote location of power. This wasn't the crossroads of, of the ancient world. The small percentage of, uh, of uh, the word is extant, surviving uh, ancient writings in general. Just the, the fact that we have far more copies of the New Testament than anything else shows you that people didn't preserve those writings. Well, why would we expect all these other writings to be preserved? Uh, and then lack of attention to Jewish history. The Jews other than Josephus, the Jews uh, were a footnote in history to most historians, not a main um, group. Uh, so here's what I want you to do. Um, I want you to read the summary uh, and conclusion. I'm going to give you a couple minutes to do that. And then when you're done, I'm going to uh, read through uh, your requirements for um, the Chapter 9 uh, letter. And then I'm going to give you the rest of the hour to work. While you're uh, reading that summary and conclusion, uh, I know I gave this to you before, but in case you can't find it or don't know where it is, go ahead and take another one. All right.
Okay, if you would please follow on with me on these um, requirements. I know I already gave them out to you. Um, I want to make sure you have one. I've been getting a lot of questions about this, and, and this should answer all of the questions. So if you have any questions that aren't on here, uh, you may feel free to ask them. Uh, so you have received a letter from a friend who is in his first year of college. He's taking a religion class. Although he grew up in the church, the class is shaping your friend's faith. The professor insists that the Bible is historically unreliable and fictional. Your friend has been taught in this class that the New Testament is not, a, not history, but rather legend. In, in addition, the professor has told the class that the Bible is full of errors because we only have copies of copies of the original writings. Now your, friend, now your friend doesn't know what to believe. In his letter, he asks you for help. How can I know the Bible is reliable? Is there any proof that the stories, miracles, teachings, etc. are accurate and historical? Using both chapter 9 of I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist and chapter 7 of Reason for God. So if you're just going to use one source, you're going to get a bad grade. Use both sources. Uh, write a letter to your friend. Your letter must include a thorough explanation of at least two compelling reasons we can trust the historicity of the Bible. In other words, that the Bible is reliable and true rather than legend. Uh, secondly, uh, include material from both books read. Include uh, both opening and closing paragraphs. So be at least four paragraphs in length, including opening and closing paragraphs. Uh, be well organized and clearly communicated. Be typed, double spaced in a libri, pol uh, an aerial polybri or New Times Roman font with standard one inch margin. Have very few errors in spelling and grammar. So those are the requirements. Uh, make sure that you meet all of those requirements. That will go a long way toward having a good grade. Uh, and what? Please first. Absolutely. Yeah. This, this isn't a. This isn't formal writing. I want it well written, but it's not formal writing. It's a. It's uh, a letter to a friend, right? Fictional friend, but a letter to a friend. Okay. And that's it.